What's up, everybody? Welcome to Super Retro, a nostalgic podcast about retro gaming, TV and film, music, pop culture from the 80s and 90s and early 2000s. I'm your host, Tuck. That's Will. What's up? Welcome to the podcast, y'all. It's a pleasure to be with y'all. Yep. We got some new headphone cords. Don't talk shit anymore. For, hey, for about... uh We're moving up. It only took about a year and a couple months to get Will a new headphone cord. If you go back and look at some of ours, his headphone is literally... Almost hanging. Bro, it's like a straight shot. It's like to, a tripwire. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, we moving up. Yup, yup, you know what I'm saying? We got a little TikTok money. We got about $37, and uh, <laughs> we were able to get us some headphone cords. No, nah, but yeah, anyway, y'all, uh, it's been a little bit, you know, as usual. Um, just a lot of shit going on, a lot, lot of editing to do, mm-hmm. a lot of different platforms to spread ourselves across, uh, you know, and that we, this whole TikTok band, man, you know what I mean? Like, uh, it's looming. It is. It's it's like a dark cloud hanging in the back. So make sure. But we're gonna ride this bitch out. You know, uh, make sure you follow us on all of our uh, social media, not just that. You know, a lot of people we have over on Instagram too. So uh, go go follow those just to stay, uh, you know, up to date with what we going on, or just listen here. That's fine too. Yeah, we know? don't care. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know we got some dedicated podcast listeners, man. I really appreciate it. It's funny. Anytime we do like a live or on our videos or even e- even DMs, people are like, where's the pod, man? Yeah, I've seen, uh, I like when I hear see people say mm-hmm. I needed a new podcast or like I didn't know you guys were a podcast. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So then I know they're going to the, the right. podcast avenues to listen to the whole thing. Yeah, I mean that that was us doing a podcast is the basis for everything we yeah, do. Yeah, that's what we started. You we know? didn't the real thing just popped up. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing more that I would like than for our podcast to like uh blow l- up. like the podcast portion yeah, yeah, yeah. to blow up. Like and the reels. L- like the like TikTok and and yeah, like Insta. social media. Um which by the way, you know every episode we're putting out is uh beats beats the record of the last one as far oh, cool. as downloads that's awesome it's literally progressing and growing every time so hey you know we have more listeners now on this podcast than we did our last one that's awesome um so and, and we're getting followers on i can see like the back end followers on like um uh apple mm-hmm. and spotify and it's it looks real nice man it's uh so we appreciate you guys listening uh, th- this is actually our first love is doing this. So yeah, that's why we call ourselves a podcast first. That's right. Because um, once the reels blew up, I was like, "What are we?" Yeah, yeah. We're hey, we're gonna stick to our guns. Yeah, and we just gonna... didn't know that. Uh, you know, there uh, was different avenues. Yeah, we didn't think when we started the podcast about how interesting like our clips would be. Yeah, I had no idea. Like once we started clipping you, it, you, we were like, "Oh shit!" You know what did it? That episode where we did like the rapid fire. Where yeah, because uh, that's an easy one to make clips. Yeah, remember we did like East Bay catalog. Yeah, and we just that's really that we accidentally did what we do now. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So we like had topics that we hit. So if you go back and watch like before that, I think that East Bay didn't get enough love. I know I'm mad about we that. We redid it. I think. Well, yeah, it for sure. Right. But look, if you think about it, if you if you go back, you know the the reels we were editing together would be like just one or two from like a long from a whole long form mm-hmm. just something that when i watched it back i thought was interesting and edited together but when we started doing that rapid fire where we did like three topics mm-hmm. remember it east bay was one of them yeah. something else was and then we just kind of went off the top of the head with that with a few thoughts a we certain, had on it a certain subject and then that created that whole format for yep. us so that was really cool. That was like super organic how yeah. that happened. We I mean, didn't now, even really mean to do now it. Now it's like changed the whole game. Now it's kind of how we do the podcast, but obviously not uh, rapid fire. Yeah, know? and like a lot of people take it out of context when they see our reels. They're like, they think we missed something or didn't talk about something or, yeah. you know what I mean? And we're like, no, dude, we talked about it for fucking 10 minutes. Yeah, exactly. But like that's just one minute and 30 seconds Yeah, you or something. can't fit it all in there. Like and they're like, why is it so edited? We're like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's a podcast. We can't fit it, bro. It's a podcast. We can't fit it. You have to edit. Yeah, for sure. Like, why is it cut all in half? All right, man. Let's get right into the show. Uh, I want to start with shout outs because that seems to be. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love giving people shout outs and anybody that sends us DMs or uh, 
or, or an email or just something that struck us, you know. Which is a lot. A lot of people we don't get. Sorry. Oh, most people we don't. Yeah. You know, it's we just, try to say uh, something to everybody who comments, but that that's why if it strikes me, I immediately copy and paste it into our yeah, notes. Yeah, I see it in there. Um, so. All right, first one, uh, just, you know, I love the user, the, u- the gamer tags we have or the user tags. Uh, it's XVolcom182X. He says, hey, just wanted to say been listening for about three months. Love the pod. This is a podcast mm-hmm. listener. That's what I'm talking about. I want to hear from these people. Uh, you guys remind me of my friends. I used to hang out with my friends after school playing Counter-Strike, Halo, Crazy Taxi Dream on the Dreamcast, Cast, baby. baby. Streets Streets of Rage 1 and 2, Good riding game. bikes, listening to Wu-Tang. I'm from California because he put uh, East, East Coast rap in parentheses yeah. after Wu-Tang. He's from California. Just living back then. Also, my mom bought me a freestyle Huffy. From Everybody one, had that Huffy, boy. Yeah, for one birthday from Kmart. I see you, Kmart. Laugh out loud. That's funny. That's a reference to our Kmart yeah. video uh, or our Kmart segment. Um, Sugar on his kicks and Frosted Flakes. Bro, we feel you. Oh, absolutely. And this is my favorite part. This is my favorite part. Now I'm a retro collector myself. I'll shoot you guys a pick tomorrow. Keep up. The, the awesome pot. The pick was cool. Yeah, it was, man. It's, I could tell a lot of the uh, stuff he's collecting. Mm-hmm. I like. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I I take that as we helped inspire him to yeah. start collecting. Didn't he have a lot of baseball stuff too? I don't remember. I think he had some sports. I don't stuff. remember. Yeah. Um, but no, that, man. To think about how many people that have just gotten a little little dose of nostalgia from us and like mm-hmm. went and started doing some. Whatever it is, that's right. Collecting VHS, uh, video games, fucking magazines. Yeah, I also toys. feel like it's the age we're all at. It's kind of like calling back to us. You well, know? yeah, and fucking probably most of us have the money to be able to buy yeah. cool shit that we like. That's right. You know Everybody what I mean? is financially yeah, you're like, way better off. I'm better off than I was ever then. Like so, like now we're all like, oh shit, I can, I can get on eBay and buy fucking ten things tonight. That's right. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like whatever you want is at your fingertips. Yeah, so uh, there you go, man. That's yeah, awesome. Man. Thanks, Big shout for that. out. They, they, hey, send us some messages, y'all. We'll we'll read a few of them on send here. Send more sure. pics of your collection. Uh, yeah, I love seeing collections because guys, at the end of the day, we are collectors first. Yeah. Well, I love to say I can't say it enough. We are collectors first, podcasters and uh, social we didn't, media second. Yeah, if we didn't have this collection, this wouldn't be going on. Uh, next shout out we want to give to. Our TikTok subscribers, y'all. We in you there. heard me. You heard me. TikTok subscribers. In the last couple days, actually in a 24-hour period, we got three. You know, I'm just being, hey, we're putting this all out yeah. there. And we hadn't even been putting anything on there. We ain't big time. Hey, we got, hey, our community is growing. We're up to five now. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I feel like that's five homies that we yeah. get to talk to and yeah. communicate with on the regular. Yeah. Along with everybody else. But these are especially cool dudes because now we get to actually... Yeah, do stuff for you guys. We get to do shit on the back end, uh, for for the subscribers, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think it's dope. Like they can give us suggestions. We yep. can, we have. I've been posting video, like a couple videos in there of outtakes and shit, and like us. I uh, like the responses so far. Yeah, and uh, or just like personal videos talking to them, like, hey, appreciate you guys, you know, for just shit like that. So yep. let's give a shout out to Richard Big Guy Kugel. Big guy, that's what we're gonna right. call him. Jalopy. Big Jalopy. And B H, and I think the reason that uh, they're starting that we have uh, starting to get subs- subscribers on TikTok for people that don't know a subscriber they you pay like a monthly fee of like two ninety nine or something, but but it's different than a follower. Obviously, our uh, TikTok page and our social media and Instagram, our main feeds on all of that, are in and, and the podcast are. Uh, are our main priority. Mm-hmm. But, you know, th- they offer these services on TikTok, and people just started signing up for our, for ours without us even... Uh, yeah, we didn't have anything to give you. But now there's a couple videos on there when you go to it, and it yep. says sub only. I think people are just curious. I like it. Yeah, but but trust me, there'll only be a few of those on there. We're all about the main feed, y'all. But you, but, get, to he, you, you get to see some shit that's not going to pop up on our TikTok. That's right. We will or put, Instagram. We'll do, like, you know, tours of the basement. We'll yeah. do... Well, I think me and you should uh, go into depth how we know each other. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think people might be. Yeah. Hear that. I like oh. the outtakes too, man. That to me, I told you, man, that's the, some of my favorite videos we've ever done is the, the shit that we fuck up on. That one we posted in there. Yeah. Oh my God. I watch it all the time. I told you, I watched it multiple times a day Same. and just laugh. Same. I laugh every time. Like I, I, I was going to, I was already laughing before you even broke. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. In my head, I was like, you knew yeah, it was kind of a chance, bro. Will's talking about me reading a teleprompter for this the first motherfucking time. teleprompter had like a default speed. Yeah. And it was going so fast and tuck it started real calm and collected. <laughs> and then by like three sentences in, he started going like the micro machine guy. It was a disaster. And he was just trying to catch it. And I, I like how all the people were laughing at it. And, uh, yeah. and I like uh, like being able to do stuff for these guys, like the, the discount code for the merch and yeah. or anything we sell. Yeah. They get like a discount code. Yeah. And yeah. just anything we can do, like lives. We can do a live with just our subs. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. Like hang out, movie yep. nights, anything. Like yeah. anything we can possibly do to get these guys feeling like they're part of it. Yeah. Especially like with the, the we've already got a bunch of like ideas from them. Mm-hmm. For sure. You know what I mean? Uh, all right, let's move along. Um, we made a Twitch page. Uh, you can go follow that. I'm not sure how much we'll actually use it, but it's there. We may do some, uh, we may do game some, nights. some game nights on there or something. I don't know. Uh this is important. You know, if you want to support the pod, go on to Spotify, go on to Apple or wherever you listen and give us a rating, like, like it or so. You know the deal, follow, man. It's the follow same. Follow us on there. Same shit for every podcast you listen to. Uh, yeah, just, just you know, because it, it helps. It helps if people are thinking about listening. They go see it's rated and, you know, maybe a comment or two. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, Will. Hmm? Man, who ran the 80s? Steve motherfucking Gutenberg. Steve Gutenberg, the OG. Bro, if this this dude, anyone, this is the guy that every single person knows, but nobody knows. I agree with that. Like, I've asked people, his. do you know Steve Gutenberg? And no <laughs> one says yeah. Yeah. But if I say any of the people he played or show him a picture of him, yeah. everyone knows him. You show him, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, seriously, show him fucking anything from Police Academy, anything from, like, a Short Circuit for, like, Three Men and a Baby, like, anything. Any movie he was in, they're like, oh, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, he was a part of our childhood. He really was. Like, he, it, he had a run that is almost unbelievable. It's a good It's a good six-year run. When Will walked in earlier, he's like, he's like, you see that six-year run he had? Man, he was on God. fire. Damn. And you were like, you know, some of the 90s. I was like, Pfft. Yeah, man, no, I was they wrong. was 80s. Yeah, he was he was, he hey, he was doing his thing. Killed the 80s. Like, uh, he was printing money in the 80s. Right? Let's get right into what burst him on the scene and what most people probably will associate. He played the character so good. Bro, he is Mahoney. He, he's definitely Mahoney. Police Academy, y'all. Bro, fucking Come on. classic. It is a classic. It, it, it personifies the 80s. Like, think of everything good is about the police academy is awesome. It really is. I, that's one of those. That's one of those blockbuster specials. Bro, and it's you know what's crazy is like it's so like, I mean I guess there are some of them people became big stars, but not back then they really wasn't. Mm-mm. It just picked a bunch of cool, talented, weird people. You know what I mean? Yeah, they were like a family. Yeah, and if, they just ran. And they made a bunch of them. They kept making them. <laughs> They made them every goddamn year. Uh, uh, they probably still making them. They so, probably, some uh, some they, country, bro. Yeah, they probably are. And then in, that was in 1984 when he burst. When and think about that. That's four years. He didn't. He had four years. He didn't make a movie. That's the, right. That's or like, he did, but they wasn't bangers. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, in 1984, Steve Gutenberg hits us with Police Academy, and then the next year, next up, <laughs> right next on deck, Police Academy two, y'all. Fire too. I love uh what's the dude's name that, that does all the sound effects? Dude, uh like Motor Mouth Jones or some shit. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if that's it, but that sounds what it is. It, it does. To me it feels right. I love that dude. How do you find that guy? Like they probably he probably like auditioned, they were like, write him in. That's, I know. How do write you write a dude who <laughs> fucking makes noises? Like cause I mean <laughs> that's nothing. You don't write that. Nah, yeah. bro. That's, he was so good. Unless they knew about him before. You know, yeah, I mean, but, he fought, and then the big fucking strong black dude, yeah. hilarious, yeah, high tower, yep, and then Tackleberry, like they're all <laughs> iconic, bro. Everybody, Tackleberry, he's so funny, all obsessed with guns and shit, yeah. But uh, then like the same year he made Cocoon, oh my god, like and that was a hit. 
That, that was, was a, a huge hit back then. That that movie kind of freaked me out a little bit. It was weird as hell. I was a kid, and I was like, what in the fuck am I watching? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm six watching this. Like, like you know the pods? I mean? like yeah, the, in the pool? Yeah. Like, the, what? Oh, that was so weird. It's like, such a visual right there, the pods in the pool. How do we remember that? And then the next year, hit them hit with 30. Hit him with Police, Police Academy 3. Let's just get another one. Look, 84, 85, and 86. They hit him with three. Well, he did a Police Academy every year. Uh, and don't think he didn't in 87. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, he sure did. But look, after Police Academy 3, he hit him with a fucking smash hit. Classic. Short circuit. Bro, Johnny Five. That was Johnny Five's dude was Steve Gutenberg. Yep, that was his homie. They were homies, yeah. And, and who the fuck didn't want Johnny Five? I know. I needed one of them. I still want one. We got we got stickers. Yep. We have, look, look at the sticker Bro, right there We're on the wall. I still want yep. one. I thought by now I'd have one. A real Johnny Five? Yeah. Who, fuck, I, you couldn't have told me different. If I, it, me, seven years old, and you told me I wasn't going to have a Johnny Five at 45? <laughs> yeah. Fuck, that's my failure. <laughs> no doubt. Life is not good. Uh, that was, man. Uh, that was a good movie. And then the next year, what do you think he did? Let's go ahead and do number four. Oh, my police academy Let's go four. do it, baby. <laughs> yeah, they just, they every year, they they probably did them on the same date every year. Like, and what's I, crazy I, is they were all good. Uh-huh. Like back then, they almost didn't make a bad one. Three or four, or one of them was like Citizens on Patrol. And they, they all, it was fucking <laughs> yeah. hilarious, bro. See, that's that's what I have... I have problems as I get older. Knowing which one was which. Knowing which one was which. Yeah, but I, it doesn't matter. They're yeah, it doesn't awesome. Matter. It doesn't they didn't make a bat one where I was like, eh, they fell off. They're fun to go back and watch. They are. They're still good. But then the next year, or no, the same year they made Police Academy 4, they hit them with three men and a baby. You know the ghost in the window, Man, y'all. you know <laughs> the lore behind that movie. That's and a, it was a good movie. Yeah, it was a good. Like was three good. great dudes, like cool. Makes me think of my mom. Cool you know? dads. You know, and there was a, a crazy note I read about him. Is like, hey, always played dads in movies, and he never had kids. Yeah, right. Like, right. So how crazy is that? But uh, he's too busy making movies. I know. But then in 1988, they hit him with high spirits, and most people might not know this. Like, see, it's, I, I don't recall this movie. This y'all. is like a sleeper for me because I just happened to see the picture and was like, holy shit! Like it gave me some nostalgia, and it's like a haunted house hotel type movie. Well, see, I need to see this it's, shit. It's fucking hilarious. See, this, this is what I was also saying. That might be one of the movies that I watch, and I'm like... It's one of them that you rented back in the day. I, I've seen this. You it know? was like an old CG, like a you know the special effects yeah, where yeah. it was just about a haunted hotel that they went and stayed at, and it's comedy. Because, I mean, we don't remember every no. movie we've ever watched. There's so many in our mind that are there need to be like... They're back there. Nudged. That's right. It's a little, up to the front. Yeah. But then, like, fuck... Then same year he made Cocoon: The Return, yeah, which I didn't even remember. Yep, I, I remember it. Like, I was obsessed with with Cocoon for a while. So when that came out, yeah. I definitely had to watch that one. So yeah, eighty four to eighty eight, <laughs> this motherfucker did all those movies, and then didn't do much. He did one movie in the nineties, but or nineteen ninety, but like from that eighties stretch, he killed it. Yeah, and then he sort of disappeared until like. A few years ago, I was gonna say, I think he's back out there. Yeah, he's back out there now. But I'm saying, like, pretty much Rick Moranist, the two, the two dudes we've done for the '80s, sort of dis a fucking period Bounce after it. a solid run. Like, what are these notes here? He was no, he turned down the role of Peter Venkman in Ghostbusters. Damn, I know. Can you imagine? Turning uh, down he turned it down to play Carrie Mahoney, <laughs> which fuck, they both became known for those roles. I know. I know that's hilarious. Like what? I mean, that, if, that makes Mahoney even even more legendary. That's what I'm saying. That's a crazy risk to do to turn down that role. But then I yeah. don't think he was pretty uh, successful. They yeah. both were happy with that. Yeah, he he rode that out. He yeah. rode that into four roles. Yeah, and then like he turned down the uh, role of Josh Baskins in Big. I could see that, though. which went to Tom Hanks. I know that went to Tom Hanks. Like think of that I means epic film, huge roles, epic film. Um, yeah, and his first acting job was in a Kentucky Fried Chicken commercial. Kentucky, Shout out to Kentucky. Hey, Kentucky ties. We just turned it back into Kentucky. But don't associate us but, with Kentucky yo, Fried Chicken. We don't eat that. Steve shit. Gutenberg had a hell of a run in the 80s. All right, y'all. Next up on Who Ran the 80s, Michael J. Fox. The, the man, the myth, the legend. I'm telling you, he had some absolute classics. You, you got to start. With Back 
to the Future, y'all. Bro. Released in 1985. Like his two top first two really big movies. Oh, you can't get bigger. Oh, I loved Teen Wolf. 1985, same also year. Also released in 1985. So you know he was busy the year before uh, filming these things. But and you got to preface this by saying like he was on a hit TV show the whole time he was doing all of this. Oh, I didn't realize Family Ties yeah. was that early. Bro, he was doing Family Ties all through it. Like So he had like a day job and then went and do these bangers. Come back to his day job. Yeah, and it, but I mean, that was a massive TV show. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's Family Ties hit air in 1982 and ran until 1989. 172 episodes. That is wild. On fucking back when, if you were on TV, you were the shit. It was way different. Then. Yeah. You like, know? They didn't have a million TV shows. So, yeah. It was he, like 15. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, Back to the Future and Teen Wolf in the same year, y'all. What's All the while he was doing Family Ties. Michael J. Fox, man, like, it, I don't know if he might have to win this tournament mm. we got. Like, because his 80s was so huge. It was. Back to the Future. Is there a bigger 80s film than Back to the Future? When you when you talk about movies in the 80s. I like, think it's it, got to be up top five. I was going to say, when you're doing a top five list, how do you leave it off? Or a series? Uh, me personally, you but, know how much I like it. What's bro. a bigger fucking, series? My DeLoreans are over here. Yeah, but I mean, I. <laughs> what's a bigger series than Back to the Future? Like a bigger in the '80s. Like I don't know. That's what I'm saying. You know, like. Uh, like a movie that had a one, two, three. Yeah. Uh, what's the Indiana Jones? Probably uh, up there. You know, uh, I know that the Star Wars were the, the last two. Mm-hmm. They were all big. But, but man, Star Wars, the first one came out in the seventies. Something so. about like something about Back to the Future just being so like cool and futuristic. Back it makes then. it even more nostalgic. Yeah. And because he was a of kid. The content. Yeah, he was a young guy. Mm-hmm. He was a crazy scientist. Like Biff. it was just a great fucking story. And time travel. Well, who in the fuck doesn't like time travel? Yeah, enough? it had so many in a DeLorean. But like then, what would he do? Uh, Casualties of War was a crazy uh, war movie he did with Sean Penn, mm-hmm. which is a pretty good movie. Yeah, and then. He hit Back to the Future 2 in 1989. Yeah, which was a... I mean, that was bigger than the I was gonna say, original. Yeah, I was going to say, a lot of times, that one, that one is like the uh, the pinnacle. The it, is, it definitely is. It, yeah. You know, it's the pinnacle. I think you're right. Yeah. Like, it, it is the highlight of his career. Yeah. Because, I mean, he had a pretty good 90s, too. But, oh, yeah. But then dude got hit with fucking Parkinson. Oh, man. I mean, he, so but, sad. But you know what? I'm, he's still kicking, bro. I know. I just saw him at a hockey game the other day with Jason Bateman. Two fucking Teen Wolves sitting at a hockey game <laughs> yeah. in 2024. How cool is that? That's pretty cool. Like he's, he, they, I, he's done more for Parkinson's than anybody in the world. Mm-hmm. Like his foundation Absolutely. is like the, the leading foundation for someone trying to, you know, find a cure for Parkinson's. Like, what a good, a crazy life. Like, I know. think about being as big as he was. Yeah. And then having that happen to you. Early. Yeah, in his career. Like, that is that is. And then he, got, he had a wife and kids after it. Great life. But, I mean, think about what, I mean, that's a that's a tough pill to swallow when you're on top of the world. Well, he they said during Doc Hollywood, he started uh, f- feeling his uh, finger twitch uncontrollably. Yeah. yeah. And he was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Think about just a little. Mm-hmm. And then your whole life changes. You go to the doctor and it's all, it's all yeah, over. Like, hey, it's bro. not over, but you know, yeah, I mean, cause he, you know you got a struggle on your hands. I mean, dude, he uh, he's still one of the most iconic actors, I think, ever. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, when you think about him, it's not like he was a crazy, awesome actor. He just right. had, he was so cool for the 80s. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Like, he embodied what it meant to be cool. All right, y'all. Who remembers the arcade classic Rampage, released in 1986, later released on the NES two years later in December of 1988? I remember. Hell yeah, this game was awesome, dude. Man. I mean, think about how many times you go to the arcade. You, it's like it was like you had to check in with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, if you saw that on the screen. Mm-hmm. You had to play it. You had to at least stop by, yeah. give it a quarter. Like if I'm, I get to be a fucking Donkey Kong or King Kong, yeah, and Godzilla. That's right. And smash buildings. But where where I played it the most is actually on the NES when it came oh, yeah, out for in, sure. in 1980. But I do remember seeing that oh arcade. Oh, my God. I remember playing it. Like I yep. said, I had to check into it. 
All right, y'all. Rampage is a 1986 arcade video game by Bally Midway inspired by various monster films. Players could control one of three monstrous characters, George, an albino gorilla, Lizzie, a giant lizard, and Ralph, a huge wolf. These creatures were the result of various bizarre transformations ranging from experimental vitamins to radioactive mishaps. <laughs> Yeah, they were they were humans that like got infected or something and turned into these they took in, the wrong to stuff, these man. monsters. Yeah, they just they got the wrong shit. The objective of the game is to destroy cities, destroy and, everything, and combat military forces while maintaining health. Yep. The game is set across 128 days in cities across North America, with each cycle repeating five times. Jesus. Gameplay includes destroying buildings, eating humans, and avoiding damage. Uh, Bro, you could not beat this game. Y yeah, hundred. Like, what they, we just we just asked how many levels there were. Uh, to Google, 768 levels, y'all. Stages. S oh, and, Go and Google corrected me and said stages. Bro, S I I played it recently. I play I play it. And I, I played it for two hours, and I was pretty good. Yeah. And it just kept going. And I was like, I got shit to do. Yeah, hell no, nah. I'm not I playing rampage. Go. You know, for me, it gets it gets it burns. You do out the same quick. thing, y'all. You're just climbing buildings, breaking it down, falling, jumping off, jumping off. It burns out quick. Hitting helicopters, smacking dudes, eating people. But it's full of nostalgia. For yeah, me. bro, it's such a fun game. Like, is this is my son's first game that I got him on NES, and he loved it. It's an easy introduction into. Uh, into NES. the NES. It is, really. If you're just like, you, you know, here, play Any this. little kid can play it and like it. It's fun. Because they get to smash it. It's immediately fun. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But yeah, I liked all the little quirks about it. You know, all, all the little, you know, when you go up the building, you hit it, there's like either food in there or what, there's like... Uh, uh, Some shit hurts you. There's like poison. Yeah. You like eat poison. I love that shit. And then isn't there like uh, like dynamite sticks or something? Mm. Does somebody throw dynamite? Oh yeah, they throw them at you. For yeah, sure. they throw them at you. Yeah, and then you can accidentally eat them. Maybe I don't know. I you think can, so. You it's, can eat all kinds of shit. You can eat a lot. I like <laughs> you just eat the people. You can eat them. And then there's like the the lady smashing helicopters is so fun. It really is. And I forgot that you could smash helicopters like the last time I played it, just because it had been so long. Mm -hmm. And then it like when I was up there, one came by me, and I was like, oh yeah, boom, it's instinct kicked you, in. You, you reach backwards and hit yep. it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's fun, yep. man. Good game. It's a good two-player game. It, it really is. You can yep. two-player mash together. That's right. And, and I, I like think it. you can fuck each other up. I bet you, or, or you bust up their building while they're on it. You can bust each other up because, man, like sometimes you got to work together. Like I mean, it's a, it's a fun game. But, yeah, you know what I'm talking about? You, you, your buddy's on a building and you like yeah, and fuck he falls. the building up and then he falls with the building. Yeah, or hurts. he jumps off. Yeah. It's real slow, the jump. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? It's like, doo. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, good game. Rampage on the NES and arcade. Who remembers that? Super Retro News of the Week. Just coming across the news desk. <laughs> this is one a lot of people have been waiting for, y'all. After years of being banned on iOS, Apple finally loosened its App Store restrictions to allow retro gaming emulators to be hosted on the platform. In a recent update, Apple announced that the game emulators can come to the App Store globally and offer downloadable games. The move should allow the retro console emulators already on Android, at least those that are left, to bring their apps to the iPhone. Game emulators have long been banned from iOS, yep. leaving iPhone owners in search of workarounds via jailbreaking or other workabouts. Man, I remember so many people telling us about emulators mm -hmm. and saying, do y'all fuck with y'all play emulator? And yep. then we were always like, no, nah, we don't. No, we don't. we're just Because we physical. both got Apple. We both got, you know, iPhones. So, like, I wasn't too hype when I heard about this. Mm -hmm. But until you hooked me up and got me the emulator and started downloading games like how cool is it to be able to play nes old school titles sega dream anything yep right there on 64 yep. fucking super nintendo right there on my iphone and and you know i've actually played some uh i've played other emulators on the uh, iphone or just like versions of games you can download mm -hmm. and they always have sucked yeah these yeah. are on point yeah and it's because it has when you touch the buttons you can feel Dude, it. it's so good it doesn't Yep. You can feel a little and the, vibration. It, the response is exactly what I was wanting it to be. 
for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, all like the when other I ones. played the games, like I would sit there and play like Mike Tyson's Punch Out, and mm-hmm. it felt like I was playing Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Right. Albeit, but it's a tiny screen. Right. On my it's phone. like a Game Boy or but something. But it's so yeah, it's a cooler Game Boy. Yeah. It, it it's really cool, y'all. So uh let me read this last little part here. Developers have just started to roll out their emulator apps, but the user demand already speaks for itself. Delta swiftly shot to the top of the App Store rankings upon its release. That's the one that I recommend. I don't know any other ones, and really all you need is this Delta app. Man, any any system, any game almost. Yeah, it's it's so cool. And you you download the the emulator, and then you can go to emulatorgames.net, I believe it is. Something like that. Something like that. All you got to do is type in emulator games for... uh, for Delta and it'll that the the site you need to use will pop up. When I say they have everything, Man, I, I I broke this out at work. Everybody was downloading it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The next thing I know, motherfuckers are over there playing Star Fox. Like, literally, dudes on our line. I was like, we're all getting fired. <laughs> like everybody was playing some sort of version of an old retro <laughs> game because of an emulator. Yeah. I was like, how cool is this? What's funny is when I came into work. Uh, when I came in, you know, some of the guys know we do the podcast. They they all run up to me. Numerous people that morning. The morning Delta dropped, I had two people like, hey, within one hour tell me about it. You see it. you this? And be like, check this out, dog. And I was like, you told me about it. And I was like, I don't care. But and then so, I looked at it and was like, holy shit. And then somebody showed me and I was like, damn, this is all right. I mean, it can come in, it can come in handy in a spot. For sure. You know, and plus games that you've never played before and only heard about. You know, the more you get into collecting, yep. the more you see games that you hadn't played. You can just download it right there and test it out and be like, yeah, I like this yep. game. Certain games are uh, good enough to play on your phone when you're bored. But, man, I used to jailbreak my iPhone, like, back in 2011 and 12 and put this shit on there and put these just... Now you don't have to do that. ...fucked up emulators, just doing anything I could to get that type of stuff on my phone, but, you know... It's cool going to legit sources and doing it all... That type of jailbreaking though was so tedious, and it you know it always so you always it, had to update it. So now you don't have to do any. The of that easiness shit. is you can go right now and get you some old school games on your iPhone. Yeah, we highly recommend it, y'all. Yeah, emulators are finally on the iPhone. All right, y'all. Let me tell you about the iconic games that were released in 1992. It's a good year. These titles, yo, hey. This was the beginning of the 16-bit era right here. Not the beginning, but this is when, you know, that it, it, it was here to stay. And, and games mm-hmm. were changing. The direction of games were changing. The graphics were getting better. Bangers. And bangers on fe- bangers. It just felt like a different time. This was like turning the page from the NES era for sure. Yeah. Released December 15th, 1992, Streets of Rage 2 on the Sega Genesis. Fire. You love this game, don't yeah. you? Don't you got this at your house? Mm-mm. What do you got? What arcade cabinet you got over there? Uh, Street Fighter. Oh, I thought it was uh. What else is on there? There's a bunch of shit on Final Fight, all that. Final stuff. Fight. That's what I was. Pretty thinking. much the same type of game. Yeah, pretty much the same. Yeah. So Streets of Rage Two released December fifteenth, nineteen ninety two, on the Sega Genesis. B- basically, instant classic. Yep. Much love for that game. This game changed racing games right here. This really, this, this changed racing games forever. And many try to copy it after. It, it pretty much laid the groundwork for these type of games today. This kind of fucking out. This competition fight style game. Uh, Super Mario Kart. I'd say, I mean, it's still one of the best games on the Switch. I love it on the Switch. I play it all the time. It's one of the, like a game you can pop in when people come over. You can yep. still play it, and it's awesome. That's right. Well, Super Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo was released September first, nineteen ninety two, and it's just been a massive franchise. I love the uh, the the Mario Kart scene in um, Mario in, in the Mario movie awesome. where they're on uh, Rainbow Road. It's awesome. And that is awesome. It is. It really is. So yeah, Super Mario Kart, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. This is easily the best Sonic the Hedgehog game uh, in that era, on the on the Sega Genesis era. Yeah, they, uh, they perfected this one. Really did. They took all the annoying shit from the first one and kind of, you know, took that out mm-hmm. or improved they on it. They saw what worked. You know, just the fact that you could hold down and then do the, do the, the yeah. ball and then take off. 
that was next level right there because you couldn't do that on the first one. Yeah. You could not hold down and spin and take off. You had to be running and hit a ball. Yeah, you were like a car. That's right. Yeah. So that that right there, and this uh, this is when tails showed up on the scene. You know, he could fly with his tail. That was that was awesome. Uh, the music on Sonic the Hedgehog two iconic. I go back and listen to Sonic music a lot. I'm not I'm not exaggerating. I'll go to Spotify and type in Sonic the Hedgehog either one, two, or three soundtracks and just listen to them because yeah. the shit is so nostalgic. It was a great game. And then of course y'all. Released in August of 1992. Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. What a fucking game. This game set the world on fire. It did. It really did. It, you want to talk you about... couldn't have a bigger buzz. This shit created Karens with kids' mothers, you know? This was... Karens were pissed about what, this game. Didn't it have a blood code? The blood code was only on the Genesis. That's what I'm saying. How yeah. cool is that? The blood code was everything. Like you got Ninten Super Nintendo, you're weak. Yeah, you can't use the code, bro. And you go to your if you have it had it on Super Nintendo, and you go to your buddy's house, and you play in Genesis, and you're like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, you got blood. That was the shit. But yeah, this game was uh, this game changed. This game is responsible for there being ratings on your games today. Yeah, literally, this game went to Congress. They introduced a, a, a bill. It passed, and they made a law where all games have to have a rating on them. Because, uh, you know, kids were just tricking the shit out of their parents and being like, buy me that game, buy me that game. Then they'd walk in the room and see uh, somebody ripping somebody's skeletal fucking... Yeah, ripping their spine yeah. out. They're like, oh my God! But... But what a fun game. Oh. Uh, Street Fighter Two, in the same year. 1992, July... July, uh, July 15th of 1992. Like, it's two of the most iconic fighting games ever. That came out the same fucking year. And, and it's weird. You were either like a Street Fighter dude or you were a Mortal Kombat dude. And I'm not going to lie. I was definitely a Mortal Kombat I dude. I was both. I couldn't not play both. That's true. I mean, if you didn't have both in your collection, then then you just, you know. They were just you, different. Like Street they Fighter were. was seemed more like weird and real and like. Street Fighter was more arcade. I'm saying no. Like Mortal Kombat seemed more real, like and crazy. Yeah. And, but Street Fighter seemed more cartoony and arcadeish. And more like, uh, you know, yeah, it was more of a an arcade style fighting game. Yeah, you know, and you felt the same. But when you were playing Mortal Kombat, bro, you felt. No oh, man, when you got that finish him. Yeah, and then remember how complicated the fucking moves were. Yeah, like, you, you go, if you hit back, one, back up, up. A B A B yeah. down swoosh around. Yeah, if you hit one, you were like, yes. Oh, it was the best feeling ever. Now, as an adult trying to do that, it's I'm not doing it. <laughs> no, I'm just button mashing till I fuck till yeah. I fuck you up. Like I remember when you'd first do them, you would freak out. Yeah, that was next level when you hit your first one. The Legend of Zelda: A Link to the Past Man. released April thirteenth, nineteen ninety two. This is often referred to as the best game in the Legend of Zelda series. I'd, I'd say it's one of the best games of all time. Yeah, oh, for sure. On I, anything. I, anytime we talk about this game, I always say I feel like this is the game that Shigeru Miyamoto was trying to create the whole time. Yeah. When, when he had the idea, you know, when, when you hear him talk about uh, the first Legend of Zelda on the NES, about going into the caves and the... And, and and going and exploring yep. places and going into the woods. This is the game, in my opinion, that he wanted to make when he made the first yeah, like Legend te of Zelda. Technology and uh, capabilities just caught up, and he was finally able to portray what he was trying to do. Because, mm -hmm. man, when I played this in 1992, because I played it as soon as it came out, like, I was hooked. Absolutely. Like, I played this game today. Today. Well, on my Switch. You, oh, you played it today? Yeah, oh, on my funny. Switch. Yeah. Uh, when when I think of a Zelda game, you got to think of the first one and you got to think of this one. And I, yeah, I've popped this one in yep. and I've gotten pretty far. Remember, I mean, it was probably four months ago, I was talking to you about how mm -hmm. far I got. I was like deep, bro. Yeah. It was deep. I got to put it back in because I kind of gave it a pause for a minute. But, yeah, you I know. had just gotten the boots, bro. I was... That was deep. <laughs> Iconic game doesn't doesn't really get any bigger than that no. for us anyway. 
uh, Wolfenstein 3D came out May of 1992. This game right here revolutionized the first-person shooter game, and it is often hailed as the grandfather of first-person shooter games and it was listed as one of the greatest games of all time. Without it, we wouldn't have any of the games. Yeah, it that, was big. You know, this this was the uh, the... The the Call of Duty work. back then. This was the groundwork for what followed after it, which was Doom. Yep. You know, you wouldn't have the Call of Duties. You wouldn't have... Battlefield. You wouldn't have uh, PUBG. I was like, going to say PUBG. Yeah. What's the other one the kids play all the time? Fortnite. Fortnite. Uh, you know, you wouldn't have 007 yep. even. that The way that they were doing that changed everything. And there's a cool documentary on... Um, on uh, this was like to let you know that this was possible. That dude created the the creators of it. He he created some movement that allowed him that allowed the game to operate that way, yeah. where they couldn't do it before. Mega Man Five dropped December fifteenth of nineteen ninety two. We didn't miss Mega Man this time because yeah. we missed it on our nineteen on our nineteen eighty seven. Well, Mega Man Five dropped December fifteenth, nineteen ninety two, for the NES, and this is the. Uh, this is the most expensive one in the uh, series of NES. Uh, of the NES, yeah, I, I, and you know it seems like six would be because that one would be a little mm -hmm. rarer. Uh, but you know, hey, we have it in the collection over there. But yeah, Mega Man Five came out in '92, so there's the iconic games of 1992. It's a pretty good list, man. We probably missed a lot, but this these were the ones that really stuck out when we were doing some research. Like, oh yeah, we we got to hit. Those. I think it's cool that there were so many. There's a lot of different systems in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because Wolfenstein was on the uh, computer. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's a lot of cool different games that were on multiple yeah. systems. Yep. We covered Genesis, Super Nintendo, computers. Regular Nintendo. Re NES. Yeah, yep. yeah. So, yeah, y'all, let us know what we missed. Yeah, I'm sure we fucked up. Let's head on back to 1992 again and talk about the movies that were released. You just went to Blockbuster. Yeah. Oh, You just yeah. rented some movies. Motherfucker, you standing in the Blockbuster right now yeah. talking about these. New releases. Remember Let's, the new release section? Oh, yeah, bro. Oh, you walk in there and see Un Unforgiven. Oh, my God. Like, it was the craziest it's like cowboy movie ever. Clint Eastwood. Matt Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. Don't you ever kill Morgan Freeman. Gene Hackman. He was a bad, good bad guy. Yeah. This was a huge movie. It was. Clint, this was Clint Eastwood. Like, Clint Eastwood was still old as fuck. He and, was old as hell then. <laughs> I know. This and, was like a resurrection. And this shit was you know in 92. I mean? Yeah, this was the second half of his career. Yeah, it was like, I can still be a cowboy. <laughs> yeah. And then that was a good, that was a really good yeah. movie. Gene Hackman, the great bad guy. And then like, then you had Encino Man. Oh my God. Remember how funny and... Like, Polly Shore had a uh, Polly had a good Shore run. had a good '90s, bro. Yeah, he might have had a good '80s and '90s. He had a great '90s for sure. Like he was a he was a fixture. He really was. You a hey, comedy Encino Man comedy. Great movie. Uh, underrated. Yep. I would say it's underrated. Well, who is it? Brendan Fraser and uh, Sean Astin. Yep. Like and Polly Shore. What a trio. For sure. They find a fucking caveman. <laughs> In their house. Yeah, and he and they roll with him, and he goes to high school. Like, what a crazy movie, man. That's a good one, man. It's a classic. And then what we got, A Basic Instinct, was. it, it had a, a a moment where it was like the most controversial movie ever, mm -hmm. where she did her... She did the little leg trick, she Sharon the, Stone with the leg trick. She killed him with that. She did. She killed him. Yeah, it was funny. I, I've, I've watched that back recently, and uh, all the dudes sit in there, you know, it was just they, complete silence. They She killed him. <laughs> She killed the world with that. Yeah. When she did that, everybody was like, no way she did that. And everybody was like, holy shit. She did that. They were, you know how many pauses were? <laughs> you know how many people paused Basic Instinct? Uh, and it was on VHS. Yeah, that was when then. you had to time it. Because. It was like a pause, 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 pause. I'm telling you, the quality of VHS, it's not meant for what y'all were trying to do. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? Digital age, we got it. <laughs> Back then, whew. <laughs> Uh, what else we got? Man, oh, Reservoir Dogs. Reservoir Dogs, released August 9th, 1992, was written Man. and directed by Quentin Tarantino. Independent. This Film. was an independent. This was his first long, f yeah. long feature ever. He had done some short stuff. This is when never, they knew. 
This is when they knew. And this 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 film actually didn't a it didn't gain its popularity into like for the most part. Yeah, the cult. Until following. Pulp Fiction came out and was super successful and people and were like, back. yo, who the fuck is this guy making these type of movies? And they found Reservoir Dogs Man, and were like, this is a fucking The gym. cast of that film Man. is, if you look at it then, all of those dudes went on to be great. Harvey Keitel. The whole room. Michael Madsen. Yeah. Steve Buscemi, yo. Tim Roth. The whole room, bro. To name a few. But here's, here's something I learned when doing just a little bit of research for it. Uh, through a mutual partner that Quentin Tarantino had, he was able to get the script to Harvey Keitel. And originally, they only had a $30,000 budget to make Reservoir Dogs, which was going to be a short film. Well, after Harvey Keitel got his hands on the script, he's like, no, 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 no. We're doing this. I'm going to sign on as a producer, which would have been huge for Quentin Tarantino at the time, a a relative no-name director. Mm -hmm. Uh, But he had written... um, True romance. Yeah. So he wasn't like a nobody. That was a, that was a good movie too. But they got him one for one point five mil. It was so a different Kytel's than Kytel's involvement was able to help raise one point five million dollars for an independent film, and uh, the movie ended up making about double that. But it was a instant hit at all the film festivals. Yep, I could see. And, and it, uh, you know, obviously today it heavy Still lives on. classic. I love that movie. Yep. I love that movie. Yeah, I think it's really cool that that Harvey Keitel helped mm-hmm. uh, him out like that, and then and, went on to be all in all kinds in of all his of movies. his movies. Yeah, yeah because it's like he paying it forward. He was like, I, I, I like this dude. Yeah, it's like that's awesome. Uh, y'all know about the Mighty Ducks? The Mighty Ducks, bro. Y'all. That, 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 that movie just hits you. It really does. It hits you in the goods. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you watch that and you were like, I don't even like hockey. I know. You know what I mean? Well, back then, yeah. both of us in hockey. Look, shirts. We both have hockey shirts. But on. back then, you was like, I don't fuck with hockey. And then you're like, I, I like these kids. Yeah. I'm in it. Like, I wanted the goddamn, uh, I, I wanted the, uh, what were they? I wanted the Mighty Ducks to win everything. Yeah. And then what was the goalie's name? Goldberg. Goldberg. Yeah. Yeah, he made it. He, yeah. He made it through the through the ringer. Dude went through a hard time. He really did. I follow him on Instagram. Yeah, me too. But Emilio Estevez. Killed Mighty it. Ducks. This one, they made, they may have made too many of these, y'all. They, they still, they, they got one right now. They, Disney, or is it Disney? Yeah. Disney's, so, Disney's doing it again. They still putting these motherfuckers out. <laughs> Y'all just stop putting the Mighty Ducks out. Let it live. Let it live. Let, let it let it be. Oh, let it shit. be what it was when it was. Bro. Uh Aladdin. Aladdin. Come on, man. Robin Williams is a genie. It doesn't get much wrong. better than that. You can't and I go meant wrong to look up how much Aladdin made and, and where it sits on It the, made a uh, lot. Where it sits in the history of Disney. But you know what? Doesn't matter. They done it made was, Aladdin forty five times. Aladdin's the best Disney film there is, y'all. I'm going to go out and say it. I used to watch this thing on repeat. Rewind. Play. Rewind. Play. I used to watch it so much I wore the tape out. I'm not even joking. <laughs> as like a as like a uh, 16 year old. Like I, sh- I should have been like doing other shit. Yeah. I'm like watching Aladdin when nobody's looking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This <laughs> Love next that one, shit. The next one was the biggest you could get. Wayne's World, y'all. Man, it got F. Those two dudes went on a run. They really did, man. I look, man. Wayne's World is one of the most quotable movies. If you go back and watch it, I don't. I didn't realize when I went back and watched it how much of my vocabulary actually was influenced by Wayne's World. Yeah, it was a it was a cult. Like it changed the it changed like the whole culture. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was a part of the culture. It helped time. move the culture forward. Yeah, like you you were literally attached to these two dudes. I love it, dude. Like, swing. I know it. So much shit. That if you're going to spew, spew into this. <laughs> I, there, I say, oh, when they riding around on a gremlin. I, I literally, to my wife, I still say, squeeze me. Yeah. You know what I'm Hilarious, talking about? Hilarious, bro. I, 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 like, everything that Wayne says, I basically say. So, Michael Myers and, was it Dana Carvey? <laughs> yeah. They yeah. fucking killed those roles. And uh, what, what's uh, 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 the pretty motherfucker? Rob Lowe? Yeah, Rob Lowe. Kills I love it, that bro. dude. I love that dude. He's great in everything. He really is. So yeah, Wayne's World, y'all, come on. Also released in 92? The the, the OG fucking Batman, bro? My, my no, Batman. It's, they've, they voted him the best Batman ever. He just, is. Just recently. Michael like the Keaton, world did. 
Michael Keaton is the best Batman ever, and everyone else is just pretending. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. Batman Returns, directed by Tim Burton, is the best goddamn Batman movie that has ever been made. I don't care what anyone says. The Penguin, Danny DeVito. Hey, man. Have you ever said Candyman three times? Candyman, Candyman, Candyman also was released in 1992. That movie scared the shit down of me. Bro. I'm not afraid to say that I looked in a mirror and said that and really got goosebumps. Mm-hmm. I thought something was going to happen. Me too. Me too. They had me thinking something was going to happen in my bathroom in Germantown. No, to the point where I, I wouldn't do it like back I would, then. You, you, would, you would fucking tell your buddies, I dare you. Oh, yeah. To go in there. Oh, 100%. I remember daring my boys. I dare you. And then nobody would do it. Because they were ultimately scared. Because this was early on. I was still, you know, I wasn't. I was still like 10, 11 type shit. It was that that world of fantasy where you're like, is this going to happen? Motherfuckers just going to show up. Is going to happen? Murder everybody. And then you do it and nothing happens. You're like, you're going to show up and kill everybody. Then you were disappointed you didn't die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nothing happened. Shit. But that was one of them ones where you'd stay up. Man, you would stay that up was and a, watch like it. a Freddy type of movie. Scared you. That's right. You like thought it was real. You didn't want to go to sleep. Yeah. With your boys. That was a good movie. We need to talk about more horror on here. More yeah. horror. Movies. They like it. People um, like it. White men can't jump, y'all. Man, this Come was on, something man. that I watched and like, I was like, this is amazing. The, dude, it, you couldn't get any cooler than Wesley Snipes in that movie. Or Woody, bro. I, mean, I know those both two, of them. Those two dudes, you couldn't have made that movie without picking them two. I know. It wouldn't have worked. None of it would have. It would not have worked. Like, it was the most perfectly cast movie i've ever seen at that time yeah so good and it was so like i was just like are these how are they really good at basketball i know like, it, it, it baffled me like are they not is are these real people <laughs> yeah, yeah like that's dude from cheers you know what i mean yeah 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 like uh, he's out there hooping like oh. is it cgi is that what really kicked him off what cheers no uh as far as a movie i mean movie dude, guy, uh, he Woody didn't Harrelson. do much until then, I, then he started like like he was he the dumbass from Cheers. Yeah, he went on a roll. Yeah, after he was that. like Ted Danson's sidekick. Yeah, uh, and then he was fucking. That movie just was so cool. Like Wesley Snipes dressed cool as hell for they, some, he was all of perfect nineties. They dressed so cool. I know, dude. What what a great movie, and uh, you know, it, I don't think it gets enough um, enough credit, or it's uh, it's underrated. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's underrated. It's actually a really good movie. Rosie Perez kills it. And then Juice. Man. I don't know if y'all remember Juice. That was you Tupac's. have to remember Juice. That was right at the beginning of Tupac's super short acting career. He hit us with like four Bro. or five real dope movies, and then you know he went ahead and checked out. That dude would have been one of the best actors in the world. He was really good. He was that's fucked for out. him he to was... be so good at acting mm-hmm. was almost like. She, it was cheating. I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, people worked their ass off. Yep. And he was just naturally... I mean, I'm sure he worked his ass yeah, off. Yeah, he did. But you know, I'm he saying went to, like, an artist school, He too. was so good mm-hmm. at acting at such a young, early on in his career. Yeah, he had a confidence that it just was, was unmatched. He was like, I'll play anybody. Tell me who you want me to play. Yeah. He, he just didn't have that... Can you imagine getting up and trying to act in front of people? Could you imagine? It was never even like a thing for him where he was like no. shy. Or you imagine anything. what he could have done? Mm-hmm. What roles he would have played? Yeah. Man. But that's a great group of movies for yeah, one year, so, bro. Yeah, so y'all, that's... Hey, that's movies in 1992. How many of those movies y'all rent? All right, y'all. Time to talk about the iconic music that came out in 1992. Oh my God. When I started researching this, I'm like, this may be one of the most important years to music in history. I know we recently did 1991 and that shit was incredible. Yep. This right here, um, this one's going to be hard to beat, y'all. Imagine but, riding around in your car listening to all this. Oh, it was, uh, I'm telling you, l- listening to new music in 1992 was unmatched. What was we listening to then? Tapes or CDs? Both. Was it? Both, yeah, but it, uh, it was probably pretty tape heavy. I think right around then is when CDs started becoming more normal. Yeah, like because I remember like ninety four, ninety five. I was on CDs. I remember when uh, I got the Snoop Dogg, uh, Doggy Style album. It was a CD, and that was definitely one of my first CDs. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Uh, all right, y'all. So let's hop right into these. We got a ton of music, so I'm going to hit it pretty quick. Just kind of go over e each thing that was dropped in 92. I it's definitely had this first one on tape. It's going to blow your mind. I had it on tape, too. I can remember the way this first one smells when you pulled it out of the wrapper. Bro. I, I don't know. There's just a smell, and it, it stayed that way. Dr. Dre, The Chronic, y'all, released in 1992. This is a classic album. Man. This may be, for me, we've talked about it before, this is my favorite hip-hop album of all time, released in 1992. Had nothing but a G thing on it. Had Fuck With Dre Day on it. Let Me Ride. And one of my favorite hip-hop songs of all time is Little Ghetto Boy because the beat is insane. Dr. Dre was at his fucking peak. Uh, the flute solo in that <laughs> really like changed my whole way of listening to music. It was it, fire, man. Incredible fucking album. Uh, it introduced us to Snoop, which is still around, Kicking still it. a fixture in everyone's Snoop. life. Everyone. Our kids know who Snoop is. Everyone knows who he is. Yeah, and everybody loves in ninety two, and now it's twenty twenty four. That's right. And it also that we don't talk about corrupt enough. Bro. Right, he was my. I loved. He was my favorite. Corrupt was an absolute savage. Yo. He was my favorite. I'm telling you, dude was straight spitting. He was raw. He was nasty. He didn't give a fuck what anybody thought I about corrupt. what he was saying. Also, Daz was introduced on that album. Mm -hmm. RBX was introduced on that album. Plus, it had a Bushwick Bill cameo, y'all. Come on, wrong. man. Couldn't go wrong with a little Bushwick. All right, Beastie Boys. Check your head. Album was released in 1992. Had the, so what you, what, what, you, what, what you, you want, what you want. That video was insane. And it looked like it cost like $5 to make. Yeah. Remember the video? Yeah, and it, it, it was awesome. But it was awesome. And it played nonstop on MTV. Bro, I can I, I can just, as soon as you said that, I can see it on MTV right now. Me too. I loved it. Like it played nonstop. You're right. Ice Cube, The Predator, y'all, was released in 1992. You ain't got to say nothing more than it was a good day. It was a good day. Is will go down as one of the top ten hip hop songs Man. of all fucking time. You can put that in right now. It sounds so amazing still. Yeah, when it comes on, man, it, you you know. But this this is probably our generation too. You know, I I don't know what the kids think about it. I like Man, to get a twenty year old's I, opinion on it was a good day. Let them hear it for the first time. It's like the equivalent of listening to like Bill Withers or like. Um, uh, Marvin Gaye when you're talking about R&B. You know what I'm saying? If you go back and listen to Bill Withers or listen to Marvin Gaye, there's no denying the shit is just yeah. fucking phenomenal. You're talking about the undeniability. Yeah, it's it's so good. Yeah, Even the, though you might not be a fan yeah, of that yeah, type yeah, of music, yeah. you're like, that fucking is Because the structure, the, the story, the, the sounds, like yeah. it was just perfect. To me, to kids that listen to like Future Today and all this new shit... Going back and listening to a, it was a good day. They have to appreciate it. Yeah, you have to. Okay, and if you don't, just get the fuck out my yeah, face. You can't fuck with. Uh, that. Also, another track that was on um, the Predator was Wicked. Uh, I love that track. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. We're not just keeping it hip hop. Also released in 1992 was the iconic album from Alice in Chains. Fire, Dirt, Lane Staley and Jerry Cantrell. They yo. killed that album. This album, y'all. Them Bones. Bro. Down in a hole, rooster, wood, and angry chair. Like they, their sound was like, it's still unmatched. Seattle, bro. No, no I mean even then, like it, that, their sound, Allison Chain specifically. Yeah. Like even Seattle can't fuck with them. You're like, right. Like they're good bands, all of them, mm -hmm. but say, Allison Chains had that sound that is undeniably Allison Chain. And and you can't that that's one of those bands when you hear it. You just know who it is. Oh, yeah. And like another band that like Sublime, like mm -hmm. lo lose Lane Staley, lose Bradley Noel. Yeah. It's over. It is. Y y ain't no one going to be able to. That's right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that sound was everyone That's in right. that band. Yep. You can't just replace the lead singer oh, and man. keep going. What a tragic story. What a tragic ending. Yeah. I mean, to an amazing band. That, all those songs bro. right now, I can listen to right now. Bro, the power in that man's voice. Unbelievable. I don't know where it came from because it, it, it definitely wasn't from his, uh, his stature. You no. know, it was from a it was deep, just, dark place. Some people are meant to do what they do. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Dude. And I would say both Bradley No and Lane Staley were meant to do those songs. For sure. And dude, the unplugged version of all of these songs. Unbelievable. Unreal. Down in a hole is unreal. Same. Rooster <laughs> is unreal. Alice in Chains forever, y'all. Fire. And then Stone Temple Pilots Bro. released their iconic album, Core. Had plush, had creep on it. Another untimely ending to a Great. iconic front man. Man, I, I got pretty deep in uh, listening to Stone Temple Pilots one time. Like, oh, did just you? Like a, a, a you phase. had a phase. You Bro, had a Stone Temple Pilots phase. We I, all do. It's fine. I 100% um, back them. They're a badass band. Oh, for sure. They killed some songs. Arrested Development, y'all. Who don't remember that? It, it's weird. The song uh, Everyday People is actually called People Every Day. Go figure. I don't but know. But, but to me, it's Everyday People. I remember that Tennessee song was played everywhere. Love that shit. That band was cool Tennessee, as hell. Tennessee. Yeah. Tennessee. Just the vibe. The whole vibe they it had was. going on. That, that was good. It was yeah. like a funky, good feeling. That's that's It made fantastic. you feel good. It made you feel good when it you really listened did. to it. I love that shit. And, I remember uh, the video. The, videos, the video made me feel good. Yeah, the, the, the colors in it. It was good. Take me back to that exact point when I heard Tennessee for the first time. Man. Rage Against the Machine. Get the fuck out of here. Self-titled album. Hit the motherfucking scene, and uh, they took shit over. Rage Man. Against the Machine took the whole shit That's over. That's a band that, like, it's you almost like, I hate that they're not, they didn't stay what they were. I know, yeah. Like, I think the world needed them. I know. And, and they need them now. I think the world, it just, you know, how, we know how shit can happen. Right. And I think shit happened. Yeah, shit happened. But and, you know that they they did get back together recently and play play do a tour together. Yeah. So who knows? You never know. These dudes are crazy like rage. musicians. <laughs> Tom Morello is an absolute savage on the guitar. Yep. And he he's such an important part of that band that I couldn't, you know, you can't have one without the other. No. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the bands that any one of the members go, it's over. It's over. Yeah, but man, what what an amazing band! And I'll tell you what, their shows are are. I challenge anyone out there right now to throw a bigger live or show than Rage Against the Machine. Oh, yeah. It's my dream to actually see Rage Against the Machine live like that, like like a real Rage Against man. the Machine show outside. I'm down with you. Uh, we got. Hey, let's I'll go. go. Anytime. We, yeah, well, let's do I'll, that. I'll fly somewhere because I'm not so so sure. My wife. Likes doing it because we went to a Prophets of Rage show, which was uh, Chuck D mm -hmm. and Be Real as the front man with Tom Morello playing, and it was pretty live. But it, you know, it wasn't the same. Dude, as that lead Zach. singer, bro, Zach is amazing, bro. This shit right here, TLC, y'all. They took the fuck over. TLC dropped ooh on the TLC tip. I'm um, I'm here to tell you, y'all. You might not by looking at me, you might not think it. <laughs> This is one of my favorite groups of all time. TLC, I still throw TLC on when I'm in the shower or when I'm driving in the car. They got some motherfucking bangers, y'all. They do. And it started with this album right here in 1992. Baby, 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 and what about your friends? Yep. I love this shit. They got so much swag and so much soul and the grooves and the tracks, whoever was whoever was producing this shit was in the pocket, y'all. Yeah, they caught lightning. They did. In that little bottle. They did, and I don't even want to talk about the next album because it's one of my favorite top ten albums of all time. Yeah, but this first one, they, they, they put them on the map. Yeah, this one put them on the map. But their, their follow-up, yeah, forget about it. And then I'm going to go a little quicker now, y'all. I'm going to start talking about some... I'm just going to start Bro, going through songs. This was a fucking hit. Bro... When I was looking, when I was doing a little bit of research for this video, I, I had some stuff. On, I, I went to like a playlist and just was letting shit play while I was typing stuff out and doing shit around the house. In too deep, back, back to, to the, the hotel. Bro. That shit came on and I about shit my pants. Bro, I was when like, you You're hear that, me, it takes you back. It, it does something to you. Like if you don't get nostalgia when you hear the beginning of that song. It's incredible. You wasn't around in 92. That's right. Then you you weren't listening to anything in no. 92 if you weren't listening to this. I'm man, and, and on top of it, two white dudes killing it. Two white dudes in 92 spitting like that. They had no business. They had zero they had business. No business. Spitting like that. They had everybody singing that. That's why I was so shocked when it came on the playlist. I'm like, nah, this didn't come out in 92. Mm -mm. Like, like these white dudes had to have a couple years to study. There is no they way. They had to have a couple years to study. They because they can't be spitting like that 
in 92. Mm. So it must be an error. And I looked it up. This shit show came out in 92. <laughs> Dude. Couldn't tell you one other song they sang. Because for me, shit didn't get that smooth and that dope like no. that in that vein right there until Dre and Snoop dropped. They killed it. You know what I'm saying? Where were they from? Did you see? I, I think they're from they're from Texas. <laughs> they're from Texas. That's Paul Wall's grandpa. Hopefully they're from Texas, or I just pulled that shit up my ass. They may be from Oakland. Matter of fact, I don't know where the fuck they're from. <laughs> <laughs> back to the hey, they back to the hotel. They're from the hotel. I love that shit. It, but there's what's that one part? Oh, don't look for trouble, but it always seem to find us in a You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Just the whole flow. God yeah, they damn. Nirvana smells like teen spirit. How, bro? Stayed on the charts and did ne- really never came off. But I got to be up front. Somebody's going to say something about this. It was released in 1991. But it didn't hit them charts until 1992. It didn't start blowing up until 1992. Because people at first were like, what the fuck is yeah. this? So we're going to go ahead and let both of let them claim it. 91 it can claim it. 92 can claim it. We're going to let right. it slide. Here, here's the lightning round, y'all. Here's some hip-hop tracks that were released in 1992. This shit is going to blow your mind. This is why you are who you are right here. This big mixing pot of all these songs that were just constantly thrown on you. Everything I've mentioned. I had them all. Plus this shit right here. Far Side Passing Me By. Iconic, one of my favorite songs of all time. Jump, Criss bro. Cross Jump, y'all. Criss Cross Jump. Everybody had a Criss Cross face. Or somebody knew somebody was wearing something backwards. And I certainly did. Yeah. Sir Mix A Lot, Baby, Baby got, got Back. I remember that video, man. Man, I'm telling you. Oh, my God, Becky. Look at man. her butt. Now look at everybody's butt. <laughs> no shit. Uh, <laughs> Rebirth of Slick. Cool like that, y'all. Yep, cool I'm cool like, like that. that. I'm cool like that. And then them horns, bam, ba, da, bam, ba, da. Bro, I probably played this next one thousand times. House of Pain, Jump Around, which oh. it's funny. There's a whole story by House of Pain, Jump Around came out. But before that, Criss Cross's Jump came out. And the song sounded, you know, they had the same vibe and the same kind of style. Mm-hmm. And uh, they both came out and were able to coexist, coexist and be the thing. But House of Pain was sweating it when that when when Criss Cross dropped that just a, like a month before they mm-hmm. were dropping theirs. Ghetto Boys, damn, it feels good to be a gangster. This is one of my favorite songs ever. Love that song, but you can't help to think about the scene at the beginning of the Office Space when he drives up and he's rapping it at the red light. Bro, you, that, I played that a lot on a tape. I played the shit out of this one. Yep, Dos Dos effects, effects, bro. They want effects. Some dies effects. They want to vex. Love that shit. Uh, Eric, Eric B. B and Rakim, bro. Don't, don't sweat the technique, y'all. Dr. Dre and Snoop. Dr. Dre and Snoop. This is the one. Earlier we said that uh, The Chronic put Snoop on the map. But the real hardcores know that Deep Cover, the movie, the soundtrack, Dr. Dre and Snoop had a song on there called Deep Cover. And it's one eight seven. That that came out first. That came out before any of the other death row yep. shit. Uh, it was the literally the first time the world heard Snoop. Man, UGK. Pocket full of stones. UGK. I got a pocket full of stones dropped in ninety two. It's hard to believe. It doesn't feel like it. Yep. It feels like it feels a little later. That. I didn't catch him till riding dirty. That's right. It but feels, I mean, UGK is probably my favorite all time rap group. Hard to argue with that. Yeah. UGK, Outkast, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Yeah, it, just, it, it hit me. Yeah, uh, and, and R.I.P. Pimp C. Oh yeah, R.I.P. Pimp C for sure, all day long. Spice One, Spice huge. Spice One, hundred eighty-seven, huge back then. Rolling with my motherfucking strap on the side. <laughs> of me. That was classic, bro. dude. I love Spice One. All and those are classics. Me. Every one of those. So yeah, y'all, that's the iconic music from ninety-two of nineteen ninety-two. Who remembers Maniac Mansion, released September 18th, 1990. Maniac Mansion is a 1987 graphic adventure game developed and published by Lucasfilm Games. You heard that right. Lucasfilms. This Star was the, Wars. This was the first game that they self-produced and put out. It follows teenage protagonist Dave Miller as he attempts to rescue his girlfriend Sandy Pants from a mad scientist whose mind has been enslaved by a sentient meteor. The player uses a point-and-click interface to guide Dave and two of his six playable friends 
through the scientist's mansion while solving puzzles and avoiding dangers. Gameplay is non-linear and the game must be completed in different ways based on the player's choice of characters. Initially, it was released on the Commodore 64 and Apple II. Maniac Mansion was Lucas's film's first self-published product. That's crazy. And the iconic developer Jaleco had the responsibility of porting it over to the NES. However, it proved to be challenging considering Nintendo's strict policies. Originally, there was nudity, profanity, sexually suggestive dialogue. Can't do it on Nintendo. Man. Including a remark from Dr. Fred about sucking out your pretty brains and other questionable content. Lucasfilm and Jaleco initially ignored the policies and submitted the game for approval, but Nintendo pushed back, and after a small back and forth, Lucasfilm decided to remove the content, which included a mummy on a poster in a Playmate pose. <laughs> Lucasfilm Games resubmitted the edited version of Maniac Mansion to Nintendo, which then manufactured 250,000 cartridges, each cartridge was fitted with a battery-powered backup to save data. Nintendo announced the port through Nintendo Power in early 1990, and it provided further coverage later that year. Here's the funny part, though. Nintendo missed something, y'all, in this game. The ability to microwave a hamster remained in the game. Nintendo later noticed it, and after the first batch of cartridges was sold, Jalika was forced to remove the content from future shipments. Ultimately, the game did not sell well enough within the U.S. market to justify a second printing, so the content removal was only applied to the international releases. So it's still out there. It's still out there. We have a copy here. I was playing it yesterday. Can you microwave the mine? You absolutely can. It's wild. This game is wild, y'all. Uh, there, there's a microwave, and the, as soon as you walk in this kitchen, uh, there is a chainsaw hanging on the wall, and there's blood all around it. And like this game, you have to point to everything to do everything. Mm -hmm. It's like a computer Use game. Use this. Do that. Take this. Use it here and make it do that. To even walk through doors, you have to hit open yeah, yeah, yeah. and then test the door and hit That's open That's a computer. Door. That's how computers start. Yeah. It, it's kind of annoying, like playing it now, but it's pretty nostalgic for me going back and doing that. Yeah. That's a point. Uh, point and clicks were like cool back then. But this was 1990, so the graphics were decent. These graphics were decent on this game. I loved it. It was, it was pretty... It, mad scientist is a great way to put it like he would catch you and like lock you in a dungeon mm -hmm. if he caught you doing shit and there's a lot of easter eggs in this game and it's basically a puzzle game you have to you go into a room and you, the room has all this stuff in it and you have to figure out how to make things work to either get to the next room or get a piece to get to get a piece that you needed for some shit that was downstairs you know you, yeah. it's really fun I, I love this game i love puzzle I just, games you just need a lot of time to play this game uh but yeah i just was curious who remembers maniac mansion on the nes or computer uh it, the the opening the opening cut screen or the opening shot where the meteor comes through and hits it, it's really cool it, it is super cool and it's instant nostalgia for me and i had to get my hands back on this game like i i Ordered this off eBay probably about six months ago just because I needed to see it again. It's it's worth another play, y'all. But be be prepared to be a little annoyed with the uh, the point and click and all that. <laughs> but yeah, Maniac Mansion. All right, y'all. And this week's new old shit, we're talking about the Nintendo World Championships Nintendo Switch edition that's just now dropping for pre-orders. Man, remember back in the day, you could you'd hear about the Nintendo World Championships, mm -hmm. and like it was like a, a legend or a myth, urban myth. Yeah, and people were good enough to go play in these tournaments, and you mm -hmm. got to see it in the Nintendo Powers. Yeah, and like, who are these dudes? And yeah, and and, uh, and on the wizard. Yeah, like, but now you get to do it at your house. That's right. On the switch, this this game has a hundred and fifty challenges, y'all. You can do on speed thirteen run. classic NES games. Y you can do speed runs. You can do like uh, I was watching a video on it earlier, and you know. You were seeing who could beat like Mario, the first level of Mario, the fastest or something. It's a real got a bunch of different challenges. challenges. Right. Like who can kill these four little creatures faster? That's right. And it all is, it has leaderboards 
it's online. Yep. Like everyone gets to see your shit. Yep. Like this is what I've always wanted for old games. And the speed runs are going to be crazy. Oh my god. People are just going to be trying to beat each other in speed runs. But you know what? I can uh I can speed run the uh first few levels of Mario 3 for 100%. Yeah, me too. I yeah. speed run the whole game. But I'm saying like this what I've always wanted to be able to see what other people do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or I've always wanted to play games back then with people now. Mm -hmm. And this is going to basically open up a like Pandora's box. It really is. Like I was thinking also like people are going to be able to start making their own challenges I bet someday. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like why can't you? Yeah. And why like, can't you be like look who try to do this this and this and, and then see who can do it faster. And it's the, the leaderboard and the difficulty settings and how they got all the challenges set up to where you can see what you've done, what you haven't done, what your highest score on this challenge is. Yeah. Like it, the way they set it up is genius. Mm -hmm. Like, cause and, and you can do a party at your house. Mm -hmm. What they say? Like eight people. You can have eight people, eight playing people against playing, each playing other. all doing challenges together. Doing the same exact challenge on the old NES. Seeing who could do better. Yeah. Like it's going to be a party game. I'm, I'm pumped for yeah, it. Yeah, man, and I, we just pre-ordered it today. We pre-ordered three of them. Yeah, we're already on. So you better get your ass to somewhere right now and pre-order it because by the time you hear this, they're probably sold out. For sure. Because we're on it the first day. Uh, first day. we Hey, we shout out to the plug. They called us and Rad said, you, retro need to, bro. you need to go, uh, you need to go uh, put put the, the pre-order in. We did, man. Yeah. I stopped what I was doing, went up, put them on pre-order. Good yeah. luck, Matt. If you, ain't, you don't follow, go follow the Rad Retro Bros. And uh, yeah, you, you definitely look into that Nintendo World Championships being released on the Nintendo Switch. And the collector's edition looks amazing. Yeah, it comes with the box. It comes with a gold replica of the cartridge that there's only a few of those in existence. They gave to like the winner of like mm -hmm. a Nintendo Power Contest and then like the winner of the damn, you know, tournament. Uh, it comes with a replica of that. But the promo they did, that Nintendo did for this is amazing. Yeah. I they brought back all the old dudes from the, la the latest, what was it, 2017 or something? Mm -hmm. the, all the guys that were in that Nintendo World Championships, they brought them back and, at their age now. and Yeah. It looked cool. Yeah. It was a good look by Nintendo, the way they're paying homage to the past. Yeah, it's really cool to see them taking that shit serious. Yeah, and they I like how like lately the Switch had already went back to that anyway. Mm -hmm. So you could play the old Nintendo games, you could yeah. play the old NES, Super mm -hmm. NES, and now... With this, it's going to be online challenges with your buddies. Yeah, on retro Playing games. Playing Metroid, Mario, fucking whatever. Mm -hmm. Kirby. Yeah. Like, it's going to be so cool. Yeah. Zelda. Yeah. Yeah, there was a Zelda challenge. Yeah, yeah. I'm on it. All right, y'all. With all this current rap beef that's going on, it's time to talk about the top five rap beefs from the 1990s. That's right. Top five rap beefs, 1990s. Let's hop right into it, y'all. Shit got wild back then. Hey, shit got wild back then. Let's hope what happened back then doesn't happen today. It's already because starting. Shit got out of hand, and yes, it is already starting. It's already starting. Um, Ice Cube's No Vaseline, y'all. October 29th, 1991, he dropped this, and this was a diss to N.W.A. because he famously left N.W.A. after a monetary dispute over the group's management by Easy e and Jerry Heller, y'all. Cube had some shit to get off his chest. If you go back and listen to this song, oh my God. <laughs> this, this shit would never fly today. I mean, Ice Cube's a pretty uncancelable guy, but he would get canceled for this shit if he dropped this today. Yeah. I swear to God, it's wild. Uh it, and it and when he dropped this, that scene in the movie when uh, N.W.A. heard this shit for the first time, they were in shambles, bro. They were like, "Oh my God, how yeah. do?" It was like their worst nightmare coming true. Like, oh, we fucked up because he wrote all their shit. Cube wrote all of their shit, and then he left and and wrote a diss track about them, and they're just sitting there like, "All right, oh, shit. what do we do now?" You know, that had to suck. They had nothing for him, no. and he absolutely savagely destroyed each one of them. People call this the best disc of all time, but for me, it can't be the best disc because the re-listening factor, when I go back and listen to it, it's kind of wild. It's kind of like, uh, 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 I mean, yeah, yeah, okay, that bopped it was. Ooh. It was almost too personal. Yeah, it was really, and I don't even know if it's that for me, if it, if it was that. It was... The, the beat also for me is uh, doesn't hold up 
as well as the Some next the four. Ones, yeah. as the next four. But uh, number I'm five. still saying it's number five. There's a lot of good ones, and this list is West Coast heavy. I don't know. For me, I was just uh, engulfed in this shit. Like, I loved it. Uh, so, the number four 90s diss song of all time, Fuck With Dre Day by Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg, released December 15th, 1992, on the iconic debut album, The Chronic from Dr. Dre. This was a diss to Easy e Dre had left N.W.A. to join Suge Knight and form Death Row Records. Remember the and, video? And everybody oh. was salty about it. The, everybody in N.W.A., Easy e was pissed off about it. Uh, <laughs> the video was crazy, bro. The, the video, my, dude, the video was hilarious. And I'm pretty sure it was Ezel from Friday playing Easy e in the video. Yeah. Dude, straight comedy. But the beat on this song, bump. Bum, bum, bum. Bro. Yeah. yeah. It was awesome. Hell bro. yeah. I mean, come on, man. That awesome. shit was fucking art right there. Uh, he had mastered that sound. That was shots fired, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I just remember Easy doing that dance right there oh, in, in the video. Hilarious. And then Jerry. Oh, my God. He's bro. all just a, like, you know, old man. Shit was hilarious. But yeah, uh, Snoop. This was when Snoop was still fresh, man. This shit, they they destroyed him, man. They destroyed him. You couldn't uh, really come back from easy it. Easy E, Easy E, Easy E can eat a big fat dude. Man, I can't believe they said come that. Come on, man. That shit had the whole crowd singing it. <laughs> you know they really saying? did. So yeah, that's my number four diss, uh, diss of the Four 19th. and five were both aimed at Easy E. Now, I never thought that I would put this one in front of those, but when I really started thinking about it, the beat. The, the beat on this one, and it's crazy to say that this beat for me is harder than the the fuck with Dre, or the um the the fuck with Dre Day beat that Dr. Dre made. Easy E, real motherfucking G's, coming in at number three diss song of the 1990s, and was an actual response to the record we just talked about. All right, he put his homies on this track, Gangsta Dresta and BG Knockout. And these dudes brought it right here. They were no slouches, all right? The beginning of both of their verses, iconic. B BG Knockout. Well, is the knockout. Gangsta. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, <laughs> I love that shit. And the beat is so sick, y'all. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. So fucking dope. Easy e even came correct. I don't know who wrote his shit on this. Because, you know, like I said, uh, Cube inf infamously wrote all of their stuff. But Easy brought some serious... He, he said, where the fuck you find an anorexic rapper? Talking about Snoop. Mm -hmm. That's a classic line right there. So, yeah, number three, y'all. Easy e real motherfucking G's. It's so good. Easy e has to do with all three of those. I know. And I listened back to it today and j just, you know, I, I listen to it pretty, pretty often. But I listened to it today and I had to give it the nod over fuck with Dre Day, and I can't believe I did that. It just was, it was just, it just hit me better. It hit me better. It took me to a different place, uh, cause, cause all of Dre's stuff sounded great. Mm -hmm. he, he was just dope. That whole album is my favorite album of all time. But something about that Easy E right there, he dropped like an EP. It had like five or six songs on it, and it was just nasty. It was unexpected. You finally Easy. got him one. Yeah, it was unexpected. It was like, all right, E. He'd been right. taking shots. Yeah. Um, this one may surprise a lot of people. Number two on my list, the number two diss song of the 1990s, DJ Quick, dollars plus cents, y'all, or what I, I say dollars and cents. Released October 15th, 1994, at the peak of his feud with MC8. A rival gang member, you know, there was Bloods and Crips shit going on. You know, DJ Quick, he didn't have a C in his name. You know why? He wasn't fucking with that. You know what I'm saying? His blood all day, DJ Quick was. Uh, and, I love and, DJ Quick. Uh, and MC8 was an infamous Crip. These two flat out hated each other, y'all. They dropped so many diss records about each other that... I can't even keep up. I really couldn't tell you an accurate count of how many they did about each other. But this shit started in the 80s and spilled over into the 90s. They just, they didn't like each other. And I think it started because uh, uh, MC8 said the word quick 
way too many times on a record back to back, and it was all had negative stuff about it. And DJ Quick's like, "All right, bitch, you talk, you're talking about me. Yeah. You're talking about me. They're both from the same town and shit." Uh, uh, but yeah, DJ Quick is an iconic producer. He's he's literally in my top five producers of all time. He has a distinct sound. You know, if you listen to it today, it may sound a little it may sound a little old school, but I fucking love it. It like was funky. Uh, bass lines were fat and it and most of the time it was just fun i love that shit however my man dropped his dollars and cents on that ass and had one of the dopest lyrics of all time this is my favorite lyric of all time and based on this one lyric this is why this song to me is number two and and not only that he absolutely destroys him throughout the whole song like destroys him to where I don't know if he ever fully recovered from that shit. <laughs> uh, he says, so MC8 spells his name E-I-H-T. He said E-I-H-T. He spelled it out. DJ Quick spelled it out. He says E-I-H-T. Now, should I continue? Yeah, you left out the G because the G ain't in you. That's fire. What? <laughs> what? Like, that is pure poetry. He right didn't even have to say nothing now. That's it. That's what I'm saying. That's why that lyric alone, uh, you know, and when I was like doing some research on this, yeah, I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one that feels that way about about that lyric. Yeah, that's fine. That shit is incredible. So based on that alone, and the whole song is like that. He has some crazy wordplay throughout the whole song, and he doesn't get enough credit as being a dope MC. Like most people think of DJ Quick as this like iconic producer, good rapper. Nah, dude, dude could spit. Yeah. And then number one, let it I be mean, no surprise. As soon as I saw your list, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, this is almost like our top five uh, Nintendo NES weapon list. Yeah. Everyone knew number one. Yeah, this is the spread. They knew This is the spread gun from Contra of 1990s rap beef. If you don't know what we're talking about, it's Hit em Up. Hit em Up by Tupac, y'all. Released. And this was the most disrespectful song you could ever have. My God, the opening line, y'all. The opening line. That's why I fucked your bitch, you fat motherfucker. I'm sorry, Mom. I uh, mean, dude... Bruh, wow, just right off the bat, no music either. It just it's like a cappella, bro. And then the music yeah. starts. He's like, let me get let me get this out real quick. Then he say, first off, fuck your bitch. And the click you claim, <laughs> fuck. bro. This song was released June fourth of nineteen ninety six, aimed mainly at Notorious Big, Puff and Daddy, and Bad Boy Records. Man, Pac was heated. Cause you know he got he got pop, popped outside of that uh big boy out of that bad boy office and all the shit we know today. Mm-hmm. Who's gonna put that shit by Puff Daddy? That I'm not gonna get too far into that. Uh, w- yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, that was almost like the most personal song you've ever heard. I know it was like it. This shit was new at the time. Like now we hear shit like this today, and it's no surprise. Like the shit going on between Drake and Kendrick, they're getting pretty personal. Like th- uh, this was taken. Like they were saying shit that you're like, oh my god. And what what sucks about this? You, even if even if Pac didn't uh, hook up with Biggie's wife, which I'm he probably did. But even if he didn't, there, you know, you didn't have the internet to go out there and to defend yourself and be mm-hmm. like, man, he's making shit up. Back then, it you just, say it. shit was just a hit record, and you fucking believed it. Yeah, he said that it happened. Yeah, that's oh, okay. He did. He did. Yeah. I knew he did. Oh, yeah. I knew he did. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and then in the song, Tupac steps aside after dropping heat and uh, lets um, lets his homies. Get him. Get out the way, yo. Get out the way, yo. Biggie Smalls just got dropped. That's Made awesome. fun of Junior Mafia, all of them. All of them. He went at Mob Deep, which I love Mob Deep. Bro, he said, don't one of y'all motherfuckers got sick of cell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just his, his talking was almost as dope as his rapping. Yeah. Like, he was spitting bars by talking bro, at the end. It was Saying some iconic shit that lives forever in my brain. Bro, didn't he say something about Jay-Z? Or Jay-Z? Jay-Z said, Jay-Z, fuck you, too. Yeah, Nas, he's, fuck you, too. <laughs> he's fucking... Like, anybody on the East Coast... Yeah. Y'all want it. ...could get it. And, uh... But here's something I didn't know. Tupac, just three months later, y'all, was taken out after this song dropped. So a lot of people speculate that this song played a huge part. In Damn, three months? Three months after Seemed he like dropped. way longer. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't. 
It wasn't, dude. Three months after this shit dropped, Tupac is gone. Damn. Everyone knows what happened. He's in Las Vegas, and it's over. He just he was too he was too out there. This shit led to he should have went to Africa. Yeah, no doubt. He yeah. should have left. The yeah, country. he should just cooled down for a little and bit. Gone. He should have left for years. Uh, you know, you know who needs to do it right now? Drake. Yeah, he needs. But I mean, he just he can do whatever he wants. You hear about the security guard? Yeah, he got yeah, shot. Yeah, uh, just three short months later after Hit Him Up dropped. Man. Tupac's out, you know, he's gone. And that's a wild uh, ass song to be putting out. You go back and listen to it, and then you see what happened to him afterwards. I mean, the, and then we lost two of the best rappers of all time. You got to draw the conclusion that that had something to do with it. Like, that was super disrespectful. And then Biggie dies. And then Biggie dies. Shit was wild, y'all. This this rap beef was crazy, but yeah. I almost wish that song never came out. No doubt. What if it didn't come out? They're both alive. They'd probably both be alive. Um, probably friends. Yeah, they probably would have squashed their beef and put out a put out an album. Yeah, hundred percent. So there it is, y'all. The top five diss songs from the nineteen nineties. Who remembers going to the skating rink? Hell yeah, man! It yeah. was like the first club. It really was. It was a club for kids. Man, like there was no alcohol. Nope. There was a concession stand, food, yep. and then a skating rink. That's right. Parents drop you off at the door. You was alone. Be like I see you in six hours. Yeah, you was alone. <laughs> yeah. You was at somebody's birthday party. Yeah. Getting some stinky ass skates. Ah, uh, the worst. Trading your shoes in. I wouldn't. Hey, that shit was best always, of times, though. I always felt a little weird giving them my shoes. I did too. Why? What are you doing with them? Am I gonna get them back? <laughs> Do I gotta go home in these skates? Uh, but like the skating rink, bro, was so cool. I'm sure like most skating rinks were all the same. I associate going to skating rinks at the peak of my uh tween i think it's a big tween thing it is it's a big like you're about it's almost a big 12 year old not thing. a kid anymore it's a big 12 year old 13 14 year old type of thing and i liked how they had different age groups yeah 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 but um get in the middle of the ring uh you know how that was where the kids the young kids couldn't skate mm -hmm. get in the middle <laughs> shit i'm get on the, the fuck out. out of my way i'm uh, about to boogie skate but i associate skating rinks with my crisscross phase that's hilarious y'all know what i'm talking about y'all know what i'm talking about a crisscross phase we, it, let me know if y'all had a crisscross phase because i certainly had one i'm talking about backwards yankees jersey i did not i'm talking about my backwards <laughs> pants my I was dad, a, that that's because your dad wasn't there i didn't <laughs> my dad would have killed me bro <laughs> fuck that's because all those actors were your dad that's right uh, i you know you're probably right my dad would have killed me i just walked straight out the house like i'm wearing my clothes back there is dad. no because Chris chance. Cross did it you know what i'm saying my dad would have let nothing <laughs> i couldn't have walked out of the house I'm dead here i'm telling you i had a couple buddies i lived in this apartment no complex chance, uh with my you know obviously with my mom and we were like you know what we're doing it fuck it we're doing it let's 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 put our jerseys on backwards and our jeans and mom's like he's being creative <laughs> <laughs> he got he he's a peacock you gotta let him fly yeah. but no like the arcades bro oh yeah i was there like it was the coolest spot you could do skating arcades there was your own you had your own money Concessions. You got to go buy a pretzel, man. Some coke, nachos, some pizza, <laughs> man. Like so, you was living the drink. You got to buy girl stuff. Yeah, and 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 another reason why it was so awesome is that was like one of the only times being that age where you were doing something social without your parents. Yep. That wasn't school with other kids your age. Yeah, exactly. You were in like a group of your your age peers. group kids. Yeah, you were with your peers. For an extended amount of time, it's where you got to really let your personality out around people. Yep, you know. And the lights were low. Lights were low. You know how and, everywhere else, you, you only other time you did that was at school with the lights bright as fuck. Yep. You were in there with dope music, yeah. dark lights. Yeah, atomic dog. Hey, drop. Your, your own gear. You got to wear what you wanted. To oh look yes, cool. Your style, bro. Yeah, you had to style up. You got to let your style come you wear out. Your backward Yankee jerseys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then you would boogie skate Man. to Atomic Dog. Uh, and then uh, Atomic you, Dog was the jam. It was the bop. And then they would play like the, you know, they do the slow the song. The slow song. But you got to, you got to, you was the whole day at the skating rink, the whole night 
Yeah. You were trying to get that girl. To, to skate to, to with maybe you. maybe get you. When the slow song came like, on. Oh, shit. And then you, when it come on, you might not be there yet. And you're like, oh, shit. You just go sit down? Yeah. Or you just go in a circle? Or you'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to rush it. I'm gonna I, have, I sat most of I'm the I'm going to have to rush it. I did not. In the weird carpet seat. Yeah, like oh it, oh on the on the right the carpet side, wall. Yeah, that, that where it had like yeah it had like the bench. Yeah. We on went the wall. to the same place. We did. So that's why like and we didn't even know each other. I know. <laughs> How funny is that? Yeah, we were there. Skate world. Skate world. Skate Preston. world. And there's another iconic one in here called Robin's Roost. Yep. Also champs. I did Man, all that. Fucking cool. And the hokey pokey. Oh yeah, the the, the the middles. Yeah. You do the hokey pokey mm-hmm. and turn mm-hmm. yourself around. That's what it's all about. Hey, and don't get it twisted. I might not look like it, but your boy right here could boogie skate. I couldn't. I, I was not good at. I'm not even gonna lie. When the boogie, a, hey, when the boogie skate got on, yeah. that's when I was like, I'm, I'm gonna go play. The Damn, game. I'm no, gonna, I could bring it a little bit. I could bring it a little. You bit. You gotta show that picture of me playing that game at the arc at the skating rink. Yeah, yeah. That's Real when skate. I went. That's when that boogie skate mm-hmm. was on right there. Mm-hmm. I had to leave. Yeah, I had to take my parachute pants. And go over and play a video game. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I also remember, um, like, uh, Midnight Skates. Oh, my God. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The, as you got a little older, you could go in there and stay later. Yeah. That, man, that was a good time. Super carefree. Man. And, you know, I don't remember for me, you know, a lot of stuff when I was a, a, a young teenager and a teenager, a lot of that I remember alcohol being involved. I don't ever remember that for no. me infiltrating not at all. the skating rink. Or drugs, nothing. None of it. It I was, was just, just too like, I was just too young. Yeah, I guess I guess I was a little younger than I realized when I was. And you you know it's crazy to think about how we talked about like blockbuster. Like there was one time we went skating. Mm-hmm. It was the last time we was ever gonna skate. Yeah. Yep. Well, not for me because I take the kids sometimes. I'm saying like back a- then as kids. Yeah. Yeah. There was a time we left and was like, that's it. Yeah. We didn't know. We didn't know. Walked out. Too cool for it. Too cool. We, I, I'm, I'm in high school now. We became too cool to skate. I'm in middle school. And then and then it goes full circle. I can't fuck with it. And then you turn into and, an adult. and I now I'd go right now. You have you have kids and then you take them to birthday mm-hmm. parties. I'd go right now. I'll go right now. <laughs> they could make a new one <laughs> and I'd go. Straight up. Yeah. But I got good memories of skating rinks, man. Yeah. What what do y'all remember about skating What'd rinks? What y'all man? do? Good times. All right, y'all. That's the show. Man, We're, that was a lot. That was a lot. We covered a lot. Ho- hopefully, y'all uh, stuck through it. Um, that was a dose of nostalgia. That was an OD of nostalgia. It was. My favorite, I don't know, I love talking about those rap beefs. I don't yeah, know what it was. you were into it. I just, that just hit me in my soul. You know what I'm saying? That takes me back to peak peak childhood. Right you got there. me with Hit Em Up. Yeah. That was, when I heard that, that blew my mind. Yeah, that shit was incredible. I was big on Tupac, man. Yeah, you, was, you might not know. Look at it, notice him, but man, I was. I think any any dude in his forties, any white dude in his forties that isn't like bro, some, I, I, most. I look at Tupac like Michael Jackson, for sure. Like the same way I looked at him. <laughs> yeah. Like his dude is touching. He's walking on water. <laughs> Straight up. Like, but that there's so much shit we talked about that is exciting mm-hmm. to me. Yeah, same man. Well, hey, follow us everywhere, y'all. Uh, you know. Instagram, TikTok, Twitch, even all of it. Go, 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 Spotify. like and subscribe. Apple. Our YouTube, go fucking Spotify us. Go Apple Podcast us. Man, if you Tell ain't your scared, friend. if you ain't scared, subscribe to us. That's on right on t- TikTok. Also, check out our website, um, uh, superretropod dot com. Mm-hmm. Super Retro Pod. Dot com and I know the first time I announced it on here was a, uh, one of our last podcast, dude. I can see the analytics on the site, mm-hmm. dude. We had a huge spike, yeah. and I went and looked. It was the same day that the podcast dropped. I was like, hell yeah! yeah Miss Tucker got us together. Yeah, my wife. Yeah, hey, she be web designing. She got us together. She be doing some shit, yeah. You know? But yeah, check that out because I mean we got a lot of stuff going on there. Oh, we got our tournament coming up too. It's gonna be all over it. But it, this will probably come out after that. Beyond, to be honest with you, maybe I don't know. Uh, but yeah, um. Tournament coming up. We got a bunch of good stuff coming up. We're just we got happy. some more lives coming. Yeah, you'll, you'll probably see these lives before this comes out. No shit. Uh, but we got some lives and a bunch of game nights and all kinds of crazy other material coming up. That's right. We're 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 just trying to spread ourselves out to uh, just pull everybody in because you know there's I, different ways to do this nostalgia. Yeah, and um, you know 
it's it's a lot of fun, and we appreciate uh, all the messages and just yeah, all, all 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 you guys. Just uh, that's what's really off. driving us. It really is. is if the it, the comments. If you guys aren't watching or, or or listening, engaging with us, or letting us know you like it, I don't think I'd be that excited about it. No, me neither. Because I mean, right now we we just cut this whole episode. I'm gonna go. I'm about to be editing like crazy. I'm actually excited to have this stuff because I love getting it out to yep. you guys and hearing what you have to add to it. It's like ammo. Yeah. That's why like, we had a couple more topics. We were like, let's do them. Yeah. Let's just let's power just through it. it. Let's power through it, y'all. Uh, we love hanging with you guys. That's it, man. That's it. Till next time. And if you want to email us, superretropod at gmail.com. That's the last thing I'm going to throw on y'all. Uh, Keep collecting. Yeah, hey, and we're going to start doing, every time we do a podcast, we're going to update you on what we've been, the newest additions to the collection. Yep. I think that would be a dope segment. because Me too. We're, we're always adding. Uh, that's all I got for y'all. Peace. Me too. Later.